Somewhere tucked away in a corner of Mexico, there's a seven-colored lagoon where the sunlight dances in the depths of its crystalline waters to create brilliant jewel tones. Aquamarine, turquoise, royal blue, jade, cobalt, emerald, and sapphire. A few days ago, we got the chance to see it with our own eyes. This is the story of our trip to Bacalar. The Lagoon of Bacalar is a long and narrow body of fresh water located in the Mayan coast, or Costa Maya, in the state of Quintana Roo. It's just a 40-minute drive away from Chetumal, but because we prefer direct flights, who doesn't, am I right? We decided to begin our adventure in Cancun. Besides, what's four and a half hours when you're driving through paradise? The reason for the trip, although you don't need an actual reason to travel, is that our friend Valeria was getting married. Our original plan was to take a bus, since we knew we'd be really tired, but at the last minute, Ben decided that he wanted to rent a car. It turned out to be super convenient, since the prices that they gave us at the airport in Cancun were much lower than the ones that we had seen online. Besides, there's nothing quite like setting your own pace, listening to your own music, and having the freedom to stop when and wherever you want. Ever since we landed, we'd been majorly craving a shrimp cocktail from a chain restaurant called Los Aguachiles. We arrived in their Tulum location at 8.40, 20 minutes before they closed. But huh, they didn't feel like serving us. We were extremely disappointed and went somewhere else. Thanks to Ben and his incredible skills behind the wheel, we arrived at our Airbnb right around 11.30 p.m. And wow, we chose well. What a place. And the hosts were super cool as well. I swear, I love technology. Just a few years ago, this wouldn't have even been possible. And the next day, though we are not morning people by any stretch of the imagination, we got up at around 5.30 to enjoy the breathtaking view of the sunrise over the lagoon. It was spectacular. After a delicious complimentary breakfast, our host recommended taking a tour on a motorboat to enjoy more of the many wonders of the lagoon. But first we went to the center of the town of Bacalar because we needed a Wi-Fi connection to download an update for the drone. Bacalar was officially deemed Pueblo Magico or a magical town by the Federal Secretary of Tourism in 2006, a name reserved for places that have conserved their value and historical heritage over time and have something very unique to offer visitors. The town has a population of just 12,000 and it feels authentically Mexican, with no chain restaurants or crazy tourists. Near the main plaza is the Fuerte de San Felipe, a fortress that was built in the 1600s to protect the town from attacks by pirates. Pretty impressive, isn't it? It was getting late, so we headed back home to catch our boat to go exploring on the lagoon. It was truly a delight to the eyes. We learned about some of the cenotes or sinkholes in the area. Cenote La Bruja, Esmeralda, Cocalitos, and Cenote Azul. Each time we reached the edge of one, the water's color would change abruptly from a bright turquoise to a deep navy blue. Plus, you can see how the drop is vertical, so you could be walking along calmly and suddenly you're in water that's 80 meters deep. We stop to splash around a bit in the water and feel like kids again. We were able to see the famous estromatolitos or stromatolites up close. 
organic sheet-like sedimentary structures that are among the oldest signs of life on Earth. We also saw a couple of abandoned projects. Construction sites that were only half completed when all activity was suspended. A concrete hotel with over 600 rooms, whose construction began in the 1990s, but was halted due to issues with permits and apparently some shady business. To this day it sits, ransacked and forgotten. A monument to what might have been. Further up ahead, in an area with pristine white sands called El Canal de los Piratas, there's a concrete structure in the shape of a boat. They told us that it was going to be a restaurant, but it didn't meet the ecological requirements for the area, and they had to halt the project. Today, with colorful art covering its walls, it's a modern ruin, where boats stop to let tourists explore, swim, and take pictures. Some also take the opportunity to give themselves a Mayan mud bath, or baño maya, where you exfoliate with the grains of sand that contain clay and sulfur and leave you feeling like new. Upon returning to our temporary home, our hosts proposed a new room for us that offered an unobstructed view of the lagoon. We gratefully accepted their offer. There really is nothing like being able to open the door and have the water right there in front of you. One could easily get used to living like this. Hello. Mira, te está volando el drone. Esto se ve increíble, mira. Qué padrísimo. For dinner, our new friends recommended a few places that sounded so good that it was really hard to choose just one. <laughs> but we opted for a restaurant called La Playita, a place that promised good food, good atmosphere, and good service. And it did not disappoint. I say it didn't disappoint, but really, we loved it in every way. And I can confidently tell you guys that that night I tasted the most delicious hamburger of my life. And before you say anything, like, what do you mean you went to Mexico and got a hamburger? It wasn't your typical hamburger. It was a fusion of shrimp with magical spices, cheese, and the lightest, crunchiest, most delicious bread in the world. Ben was also quite fascinated with his octopus dish. <laughs> no, no entiendo. <laughs> no, no existen palabras. Increíble. And the dessert? <laughs> Don't even get me started. Eating at La Playita is most definitely a must when you visit Bacala. The next day we got cleaned up and went to our beautiful friend's wedding. She could not have been more radiant. Between the ceremony and the reception, we stopped in another highly recommended place, Mango y Chile, for some frappes. Ben tried a turmeric frappe and as is often the case, I ended up loving it and consuming half of it. <laughs> And the reception, wow, an absolutely stunning location. And to be there celebrating with friends was just the best. Later that night, we got comfortable and headed downtown for some curios and souvenirs. And we also stopped by this restaurant to get takeout sushi and have a few super original mezcal-based drinks. The drinks were great. The sushi was just okay. 
On Saturday, we said goodbye to Bacalar and headed to Mahawal, a small fishing town on the Mayan coast. First things first, we stopped and had a shrimp cocktail, of course, chatted with a few locals, and checked out the sights. Since we'd already lost a few hours that day driving, we decided to drive straight through to Cancun to enjoy one last full day on the beach. We stayed with our good friend Vanya, an excellent hostess as always. On Sunday, we had a wonderful day at one of the main beaches in the famous Zona Hotelera with Vanya and her boyfriend Pete. And say what you may about Cancun, it's easy to see why it's a popular tourist attraction worldwide. I mean, look at those colors. For a few moments, we forgot about the passing of time, all our responsibilities and pressures, and we just focused on enjoying the moment. The warmth of the sun, the texture of the sand, and that perfect temperature of the water. In the end, as always, <laughs> the trip seemed way too short. We left feeling fulfilled and enriched, but at the same time, really wishing we could go back and explore some more. I guess it'll have to be next time. <laughs>